So we have a few time. We have a few minutes for questions. If yes, um, probably Ethel Smythe is, is uh, not a name that most people recognize here, but um, I'd be interested if, uh, if there was a friendship between uh, Smythe and, and, and Clark. And uh, Smythe is a pretty colorful character, so uh, there, there might be a good yes. story there. Yes, yes, there is. Yeah, I think Smythe was behind. Um, urging Sir Henry Wood to allow those six women to be admitted to the Queen's Hall Orchestra is one of the stories. Um, and then there's a story where, um, I mean, Clark, Clark did know her, and Smythe was very encouraging to her. And I think, you know, Smythe also was attracted to her, that in just in her old, own sort of over-enthusiastic way. And, um, and, um, and there is a story that, um, the Rebecca Clark Reader has a bunch of all the interviews that were made with Clark, you know, from 1976, 77, 78, they're in there. And there's a story she tells about Smythe, where um, Smythe asks Rebecca if she had had problems getting her music performed. And, you know, and, and Clark was always so modest and saying, I haven't had any problems. You know, I've gotten more performances than I deserve, you know. <laughs> And, and then Smythe said, oh, and looked at her and said, oh, well, you have sex appeal, don't you? And, and you know, and, and so Clark is saying, I don't think she meant it as badly as what she said, like I was, <laughs> like I'm sleeping with people to get performances or anything like that. And <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, Suzanne. Well, the, um, when I was in graduate school in North Carolina, I worked at the music library, and the, I came, came across these reprints uh, that came out in 1981 and 1986 of the piano trio and the viola sonata. So I just encountered those shelving them and said, who is this? Oh, nice. Yeah. And so then, um, you know, going on from there, there was a recording of the viola sonata that uh, came out in, like, I think just the time she died in 79, and a, uh, Virginia Askin recorded the piano trio in 1980, and so things were out there. And then um, her estate manager actually wrote the preface for the reprint of the piano trio, and he talks about all this unpublished music, you know, which um, some of which has been published, and um, you know, this the piano trio was published in her lifetime, but a lot of music, you know, like this big rhapsody for cello and piano is still unpublished. And you know, some of it was published <coughs> recently. But you know, it was just such a treasure trove you know, to encounter these diaries, um, diaries from 1919 to 1933, the memoir. You know, and it was, it's just been a thrilling project. It's also been an adventurous project, you know, but just you know, so different from what I did in the past. So, and it is such a wonderful music you now. So it's been very worthwhile. Yes? If, um Somebody ever were to unpublish, have they been performed? Are there unpublished manuscripts circulating among musicians? Or? Um, a lot of the pieces, you know, um, starting in 1998, the, the unpublished things were being published. Like all the, all the choral music is now published. You know, that was like in 2002. And um, some of these small pieces, like the Morpheus, the piece that she published under the name of Anthony Trent. That's now published, viola and piano, the small pieces. There are still big pieces that are unpublished, the Rapsky for cello and piano, the two violin sonatas, um, and then a lot of early songs, which some of which I think are really quite wonderful. So, so um, you know, and I don't know to what extent that things circulate, you know, and I would never admit to circulating. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, that was kind of my question. Uh, uh -huh. Although, um, because these works are being rediscovered and republished, uh -huh. um, how that process might work? Is it being published through Brandeis? Um, no. Um, the, uh, I mean, the pieces that were published, that's a different uh, situation because it's like, um, like the piano trio, you know, the original publisher still has the rights. Lucy and Hawks still publishes that, and the viola sonata, they let the they didn't renew the publication, so the viola sonata is in the public domain. And there's one other song that's in the public domain. Um, 
her estate manager was working for Oxford University Press, so he started to get things, the, the, the pieces, the unpublished pieces came out through Oxford University Press from 1998 to 2005. And then he lost his job, and because I don't have good communication with him, I don't know if there are other plans, you know, to publish the things that didn't get published. You know, so it all has to be through this was the talk I gave for the composers a couple of years ago because she made absolutely no provision at all for her intellectual property. It's like you read her will and you don't even know that she was a composer. And um, she was actually worried about you know the books and the additions that her husband James Friskin had made and you know what was going to happen to the royalties from them. So um, this grand nephew by marriage, because he was studying musicology, he did get the um, hold of the estate and he's sort of been. For me, a problematic figure. So, <laughs> so I've learned a lot about copyright law, more than I've ever wanted to know. And I always am telling composers, you know, to make sure you clarify, you know, what you want done, because you know, copyright is supposed to protect your works, but it's also can be used to withhold your works from access. So, yes. Yeah, I just have a question about your introduction. You talked about women and music projects starting. Yes, um, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, the Women's Studies Research Center. Um, well, we have several scholars involved in music. You know, Suzanne Hanser, myself. We have an uh, early keyboard performer and scholar Vivian Montgomery. And she's actually giving a talk out there on Thursday. And we have um, composer Ruth Lohman and the choral conductor Jane Ring Frank. Um, uh, Jane Ring Frank had wanted to perform Ruth Lohman's gigantic oratorio on um, settings of Holocaust uh, poetry about the Holocaust, and that had to be canceled. That was scheduled actually for last week, but it's just you know orchestra and choir, the budget. Um, it was just not the right time to pull something so huge like that off. But you know we're we're working together. We want to have more um, concerts. We just had a concert on Sunday. At Brandeis, we played Beth Denish's piece, a piece by Ruth Lohman, a piece I commissioned by a, a, Cuban, a Cuban composer named Magali Ruiz Lastras. Um, you know, a Cuban composer whose music here is totally unknown. So, uh, so we have a lot of ideas, and we're not, you know, exactly sure where we're going, but um, we're going somewhere. So, <laughs> so it's going to focus on classical music. Well, it's our interests, um, you know, I mean, we have contemporary composers, you know, but I think our interest is really, is more classical rather than, you know, popular or jazz or other genres. I mean, Ruth Lohman is a very, Ruth, Ruth Lohman, I don't know if you know her music, I mean, she's written this big oratorio on a setting of Holocaust poet, poetry. She's never written, you know, a light piece in her life, you know, she's writes very serious music, she's concerned with the human condition, you know, um, so, yeah, I mean, she's a great composer, but it's, you know, it's not fun and stuff, so. <laughs> Is that piece going to happen at another time? Well, we hope so. They have, Jane Ring Frank, you know, her choir is the Boston Secession. They've recorded, um, they've recorded two of the choruses from that oratorio. And, you know, and they, I think they've recorded, have they recorded more than two? I think they've, but two are available on their commercial recordings. And in fact, one got mentioned in the New York Times that got a very nice, you know, description. So we hope so. I mean, it's all in the fundraising. You right. know, it's all in the fundraising, and um, you know, and the uh, a piece on uh, Holocaust themes. You know, they were drawing a lot on donors from the Jewish community, community, and they've been they've been hit very hard. So, so. any other questions? Any violists here today? Any violinists? <laughs> you? Yes. You're a violist. Violin. Violin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Um, the piano trio, I mean, she started on the violin. I mean, nobody used to start on the viola. They always started on violin. And the viola sonata is her best known piece. And we've had, my, my Clark Society has orchestrated the viola sonata, so you can play it with a chamber orchestra. If you know it, do you know the viola sonata? No, no violin, you know your violin. Okay. But she has two violin sonatas, but they're part of this unpublished, um, difficult to access kind of set of pieces. Well, we end. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.